The Darwin Centre fulfills three really important functions for the museum. First of all, within the cocoon, we have incredible state-of-the-art collection storage for our dry collections. So there are five floors of collection stores within the cocoon behind me uh, at 17 Celsius and 45% relative humidity. Perfect storage conditions for dry collections, but in this case, uh, pinned insect specimens and dried herbarium sheets. Secondly, we have these fantastic research laboratories and offices at either end of the building that provide state-of-the-art facilities for our, some of our 350 scientists to do world-class research. And third and perhaps most important, this building actually metaphorically throws open the doors. Although research has been going on behind the scenes in the museum for, on this side, over 125 years, this is a really concerted effort for us to show the, our visitors why we have such enormous collections of natural history objects, the sort of research that we do with those objects, and why that research is important to people's daily lives. The underlying trend in visits to the museum has been upwards uh, since the reintroduction of free admission in, in December 2001. Last year we, we received about 3.8 million visits to the museum. We expect with the new Darwin Centre that will surge through 4 million for the first time. There appears to be a public appetite for much more engagement with big environmental issues of the day, such as the impact of climate change. I don't think there's anywhere else uh, in the world where one can engage with the natural world and science related to the natural world in quite this way.